welcome back to another episode of the Found in Christ podcast. Yay! <laughs> and yes, we are wearing matching outfits for today's episode. Oh, you copied me. No. So. <laughs> I didn't copy you. Sure. But yeah, guys, I am back today with my very favorite um, recurring guest, which is also my boyfriend, Gabriel. Oh, Say hi, Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. <laughs> anyways. Hey, everyone. You told me to say hi. Oh, okay. You get what I mean. But anyways. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to this channel and I just want to say that um, I'm sorry for not posting last week. I do try to keep it a weekly thing but last week I was actually in the hospital so mm. just giving some yeah background. Um, I hit my head really hard during Chinese New Year um, this year on like a shutter at the back of my house yes. and my there's like a scar here but I mean there's makeup on it so you can't really see. Um, okay, I see it. <laughs> yeah. I'm checking for them. You, you know where it was like there was a scar here um and it was bleeding my head was bleeding and there was like a bruise Bluish on it yeah thing. so it was quite hard yes. and that was during chinese new year which was somewhere in like mid february and ever since i came back to kl like kuala lumpur I have been having like migraines mm. almost every single day Yikes. and it was like really bad migraines where some days I felt like I couldn't function mm -hmm. and I was just like I had to lie down or like put eyes on it but by the grace of God by the grace of God thank you Jesus <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to the hospital last week I got a whole bunch of um people to pray for me i got like my connect members and everything to like pray for me yeah. and by the grace of god since i went to the hospital last week and got out and also you know god can bless medicine and god can use doctors mm -hmm. um but ultimately all glory goes to him yeah. i i'm completely healed from all migraines i have yeah. not had migraines since and i am like migraine free for Yay. so praise jesus because i feel like i'm fully functioning i'm at my hundred percent again and it's just a great feeling yeah so if you guys are going through or experiencing something similar you know i really do pray that you get healed and mm. i i'm believing with you for your healing as well yeah. and don't forget that there's power in prayer Amen. and there's power in like corporate prayer as well yeah, you know yeah. so if you're going through something just open up you know yeah like you know when um in in the bible it says like when two or three are gathered that's yeah. where god will be so uh you know you can just open up to like two or three people to like pray for you yeah. and there's a lot of power in that yeah and we've seen firsthand you know of the healing testimonies of god and he, the same god that healed like his people all those years ago still heals today yeah that's yeah. right so today we're going to talk about a very very interesting topic exciting mm -hmm. topic and it's going to be about Easter. Yay! Yeah. So Easter is coming. It's going to be next next weekend, I think. Yeah. No, it's going to be next end weekend. Of, yeah, end of next end week. End of this month. Yeah, end of this month, which yeah. is end of next week. Yeah. And so um, we're going to cover a bit on like what actually Easter is about. And we are also going to touch a bit on the power of prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. So get cozy. Um, get your <laughs> cup of coffee or Milo, whatever it is. Um, if you're not on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, I encourage you to just get on YouTube, you know, enjoy the full experience and get your cup of whatever it is you like to drink yeah, and see join our us. Beautiful faces. <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> see our beautiful faces and we'll pretend that we can see yours. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to pass the floor to you, Honey Bun. Tell us, like, okay. what actually is Easter? Like, what is it? <laughs> what is For it? those who don't know what Easter is. <laughs> Good question. Well, to start off, it has nothing to do with Easter bunnies. But <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. That's a good starting. Yeah, but uh, before we get into Easter, let's talk about Good Friday. Because before Easter, there's always a Good Friday. And some people may be wondering, like, What's so good about Good Friday? Why is it even <laughs> called Good Friday? Right? No, people will be wondering. God. Are you trying to make a fun? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. You always crack me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, like, no, but legit, like, what is so good about Good Friday, right? <laughs> but if you look about it, like, if you think about it, like, some people may know, like, Good Friday is about Jesus dying on the cross. And then you think about it, like, 
someone dying on the process doesn't sound so good, right? It may sound a bit... I mean, like, for those who, who are already believers, it's, like, completely normal. It's, like, we, we know the, the reason why it's called Good Friday. Yeah. But for someone who has never heard about it before, they may be wondering, like, what on earth is Good Friday, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, the whole reason why it's good is not just because Jesus died on the cross, you know, like, the the whole... The, this, this is, there's like a whole lot more to it and like you know like what Good Friday really is all about for me at least mm-hmm. is that yes Jesus died on the cross but what else died on that day is you know like when, when Jesus died on the cross he claimed back victory for us yeah. you know like he stole the keys to death and that had no longer has its thing yeah that's right you know and when he lay on that cross not only did he give up his life for us and um, he paid that he paid that eternal price for us you know yeah. to be redeemed to be restored to mm-hmm. be cleansed of our sins and ultimately to have a relationship with God so that's why it's called yeah. Good Friday because Jesus God in human form came down to the earth to die for our sins as the eternal lamb the yeah. one and only sacrifice that cleanses all sins past present yeah. and future for those who believe in him. Yeah. So he was thinking about you and me. Yeah. He was thinking about all of us. When he was on that cross, mm-hmm. it was so painful and it was so difficult for him. And yeah. he was suffering and people were mocking him and yeah. they were tormenting him. And but he was thinking about us. Yeah, you know what? I want to talk a bit more about that, you know. Like why did even uh, why did even like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have to die on the cross? Uh, like the amount of suffering they had to endure and mm-hmm. like you can do your own research as well there's so much documented evidence as well on yeah. how jesus came to earth and like there's just yeah. so many factual historical evidence behind it you know like we i, I mean i don't want to get into details right now but you can do your own yeah we encourage you <laughs> yeah go go dig into there it. is a whole lot more don't yeah be, yeah so anyways like why did an innocent man or no God in human form need to die on the cross. He had to endure so much of suffering, pain and hurts. He was whipped with like so many lashes to the point where he was disfigured. Mm-hmm. You know, he had a crown of thorns. Yeah. And like, you know, like I love to watch like The Chosen. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. they haven't like as of this recording, they haven't the, this, the series Chosen. They've not gone to the part where Jesus, um, you know, is like nailed on the cross and all. But like just to see, just to give more of an idea of what Jesus was like and even things like the passion of Christ. You know, like a lot of people complain it can be like so grueling to watch and like it's just like But it was even more gruesome for for Jesus to like go through it. I I really feel like they had to like filter it down so that people will be able to like watch it at least. But like, you know, like the Bible just says that he was disfigured. He was was beaten so much he was just disfigured and like blood all over and it's just all because of love yeah and like, like, all because of love like like the reason why he could endure it is really because of yeah. his great love for us yeah and even when he was dying on the cross he man i i don't think you can even understand the amount of love that jesus yeah. has for you even when he was dying on the cross there were people mocking him there were people like yeah like saying like save yourself since you say you're god they were yeah. mocking him so much while he was literally naked and yeah. dying and bleeding yeah. and his th- flesh was like torn in so yeah. many places yeah. and he literally said father forgive them for they do not know what they're doing like yeah. that is love right there i yeah. cannot even comprehend the yeah. level of love that jesus has for his yeah. people like if you think God is a cruel God, you're you're completely wrong. Yeah. You're completely wrong. Because Jesus is the embodiment of God and Jesus yeah. is God. And Jesus is like he was God in flesh form, like in yeah. human form. And everything that Jesus does, mm-hmm. it reflects the nature of God the yeah. Father. Yeah. So like there's exactly. never going to be a contradictory like mm-hmm. a thing in between them yeah. so when you see jesus loving on the poor or loving on the you know like sinners and loving on all these people and yeah. even loving on the people who were mocking him yeah. while they were, like while he was dying that's literally the embodiment of god's love that's yeah. literally jesus showing 
like God's love on display, which mm-hmm. is crazy. Like, yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine loving someone who like gives me like hate comments. Like, <laughs> honestly, like even the silliest, smallest, <laughs> like most petty things. But like, imagine loving on someone when they're literally dying and your flesh is torn apart and. Mm. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. I just can't even imagine it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he died on the cross for all our sins. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like if you want to find out more, like the best place to read the entire thing is in the Bible itself. Yeah. Read it for yourself. Look at other resources as well. If mm-hmm. you're the type of person who can understand better with visuals, then I would highly recommend like the Passion of Christ, the Chosen. Mm-hmm. There's so many other resources online. Yeah. Um, but yeah, best to just get it from the word of God, you know. Yeah. And yeah, so that happened just before he was crucified on the cross, and that was That's crazy like, in itself, you yeah. know. Like just imagine nails being driven through your your hands and through your feet, yeah. and the amount of suffering he had to go through, and ultimately he let his own life go. You know, he wasn't killed. He he released his own spirit out and it's in the bible as well i know that like right before he did that um like jesus for the first time experienced separation and that's what humankind had always experienced you know yeah. there was a there was a gap in between the relationship between man and god you know and like even in this even in the bible it says you know like for the first time jesus actually referred to god as no longer my father but just before he he died on the cross or rather he gave his life up on the cross, he actually referred to God as my God, my God. Mm-hmm. You know, so that signifies that there was a separation that took place on the cross so wow. that we can be, our relationship, my relationship, or humankind's relationship with God can be restored. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's so much more, I guess, detailed and yeah. so much deeper than that than we can explain. Yeah. Like, I guess, I don't think we're doing such a good job explaining <laughs> it, but, you know, we're trying. We try. <laughs> but, but yeah, and then three days later, he rose from the grave and that's, that's why we celebrate Easter. Easter. Easter is to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Yeah. And it's not about all these weird bunnies or, <laughs> you know, like, whatever yeah, that is. Eggs. Yeah, all these eggs, <laughs> these bunnies, and this. that's actually from some legend that's, like, not yeah, true. Um bunny sorry oh, he has a prop he has a prop that he's very proud to share <laughs> okay this is a weird looking bunny but anyway but easter, it's not about all this <laughs> no i gotta do it easter is not all about this okay <laughs> i wanted to show it no okay I get to do it. so yeah anyway what is Easter all about so easter happens like three days after good friday which is on a sunday and uh is it just so much more than Easter bunnies or like random eggs, it's, colored no, eggs? No, it's, it's it not so much more. Yeah, it's nothing to do with that. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> Easter is when Jesus actually rose from the dead. Yeah. After, after being nailed on the cross, he was uh, taken down and put in a tomb. And um, the whole story is in the Bible of how like angels were on top of the tomb. The tomb was open. His body was nowhere to be found because he was Jesus rose from the dead. And, yeah. that, and he's that, living today. Yeah, yeah and that, right that is all about Easter. But... What Easter signifies for me is actually, like for me at least, how I interpret it is uh, Jesus' victory over death. You yeah. know, like the enemy tried his level best to kill him and he thought he had won when Jesus was on the cross. But, you know, three days later here, Jesus is just showing up like, hey, you know what, your best, your, your best shot at me didn't work and yeah. I'm risen. And, you know, it's... It's, it's so much more than just Jesus, uh, you know, like rising up from the dead again. Yeah. It's his victory over death. Yeah. And even though we are living in a temporal world right now, for those who believe in Christ, you know, we, we have a eternal home. Yeah, eternal salvation in yeah. heaven. And that's yeah. because of Jesus. There's yeah. nothing we could have ever done or, you know, ever said or done or whatever that can, that can help our own selves. Yeah. Like, not go to hell and yeah. not like perish we yeah. all deserve hell yeah even but, your good works no matter how good you are yeah it doesn't... like humans are evil human heart is evil and we all actually deserve like eternal damnation mm-hmm. but because of jesus he's it's not just like we, yeah. we we have to die and we have to get eternal damnation because of jesus we have eternal salvation yeah. we have the option on whether we want to choose eternal salvation 
And mm-hmm. I love how um, this pastor in our church, you know, City, his, his name is Pastor Paul. I love mm-hmm. how he would always say, he says, it's a get out of jail free card. Mm-hmm. Like imagine if you did the crime and you're supposed to go to jail, but yeah. someone gives you a get out of jail free card mm-hmm. and they take your place in jail instead. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is literally the gospel. That yeah. is literally like Jesus, what he did yeah. for us. Yeah. And yeah. So like, Easter for me is, is, is so much more, you know, it's, it's the, how I look at it is Jesus rose, Jesus rose from the dead and, you know, like with that, there was no longer a gap between a relationship between man and God, you know, the cross was the one that unified or rather restored that gap and now we have free access to God, you know, like now He is my God and my Father, Yeah. you know, and that's what Jesus came on the world to do as well to restore that because yeah. the first the first man Adam sinned and lost that relationship you know mm-hmm. and because of that we live in a we live in a fallen world that's why people die that's why people get sick people are in poverty there's so many curses mm-hmm. and the world is just uh, not as beautiful as nowhere nearly as beautiful as God had intended it to be yeah you know but how did God save it he he sent his one and only son Jesus Christ to come down on the cross to be God in human form, to yeah. restore that, you know. So like the first the first man sin, but the last, you know, I think there's a verse in the Bible that says about how the first man sinned and through that uh through that man came like, like death through Adam but life yeah, through Christ. Yeah, that's the one. That's the yeah. one. So, so yeah, like Easter is just so much more. Yeah. You know? And we really encourage you to really take this time, like yeah. if you have no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> it's fine. Like if, if we've lost you up until now, we're it's sorry. fine. <laughs> yeah, we're sorry. We um, but we, we really encourage you to not just know this, like, I mean, even if you've grown up like, you know, as a Christian mm-hmm. and these are like, you know, things that are all too familiar to you. Yeah. Like you've heard this a billion times through Sunday school, through church and everything. Yeah. And but you you know it is head knowledge, but you don't know it as like heart knowledge. Yeah. We really encourage you to take this time before Easter to just do a reset with God. Yeah. Like just, you know, get into the word of God and ask God to reveal himself to you mm-hmm. in a way that's so personal and for you to know not just head knowledge about you know the death and resurrection of christ Mm -hmm. but as heart knowledge that you really understand the extent of his love for you that you really i mean we can't fully understand it but you know at least you can begin to grasp it Mm -hmm. ask god you know sit down with him with your bible with like, you know, maybe Easter Bible plans on like the U version Bible app, yeah. with a journal, you know, shut out all the noise of the world and yeah. just ask God to just reveal just even a glimpse of yeah. the love that He had for you when He was on the cross. Yeah. Just ask God, you know, why did you die on the cross for me? Why did you even do this for me? Like, yeah. why do you even love me so much? Yeah. Like. Ask God and discover Him on this journey. We encourage you. Like, if there's not a better time to, mm-hmm. you know, if, if ever there's a be- best time for you to do a reset with God, it's right now. No. It's today. <laughs> like, you know, after you're done listening to this podcast, just go get your journal, get your Bible. Yeah. And just ask God, like, why is it this story that people tell me over and over again that I've heard in like Sunday school or yeah. church over and over again? Why is it so important? Like, mm-hmm. just ask God that and process mm-hmm. that with Him. And, you know, one of the ways that is very, very effective in resetting your relationship with God is actually through fasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and our church is doing a church-wide um, fasting and prayer now leading up to Easter. And let me tell you, fasting is so important and it's so powerful um, mm-hmm. because I, I think, like, the principle is that when you deny your flesh, like you're actually more sensitive to God. Yeah. You, because you're not like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with eating, but it takes it you to a whole new level yeah. when you actually like, you know, say, okay, you know what? I'm just not going to eat for uh, certain meals in the day yeah. or certain things that you love. Like if you really, really love chocolate, you, you say, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop chocolate for like these five days yeah. or so. Or, or like, 
even like social media yeah. um you know just to kind of like in a way put your spirit first like put god first yeah and you basically will, anything that is like has priority over god especially that yeah. is something that you really need to cut out you know like yeah i live, mean and, yeah. and we're not saying like forever yeah like you can do it like for a per- period of time yeah um but we do find that food fasts are more effective than like things like fasting social media although that yeah. helps too that that can be powerful in its own way too but we really have personally experienced yeah. that when we fast like for me i'm i was doing a daniel fast um and and i was i'm i'm kind of doing like a half day daniel fast now like where i fast like do daniel fast as i eat vegetables throughout the day then for mm-hmm. dinner i'll eat like um proper meals but like we have personally experienced that when we do these kind of fasts we're actually like we feel more spiritually sensitive we feel mm. more sensitive to god we feel more disciplined like we can mm. i don't know read the bible more or like pray for longer hours yeah. and it's not i guess it's not like always 100% the case for like everyone but you know we do hear like testimonies and we do yeah. hear people growing a lot through like fasting and praying mm. and seeking god yeah. so we really do encourage you to like take this time to like really reset with god mm-hmm. because yeah what better time is it than easter right yeah. and i remember like one of our pastors from kingdom city actually said this like when like when you pray it's like you're you're knocking on the wall with a hammer but a when you hammer. like a small <laughs> hammer like like it pray is still effective like you're knocking on the wall with a hammer but when you fast and pray it's with a sledgehammer like you're like you yeah. know on the you know the, the thing that's maybe in between you and like breakthrough in yeah. your life yeah. so i uh, i mean you know we're we're probably not the best explainers in fasting as well there's a But lot of this shed some light into yeah. it and this leads you to uh find out more about it yourself you know yeah and there's resources online like um yeah. by Lu Angle for example that really talks about um the importance of like fasting in mm-hmm. in a lot of detail. Yeah. Um so you know I encourage you to like check out that like on the online resources yeah. and also yeah do try to start fasting because I mean it is uncomfortable like skipping a meal or like Yeah, I think I want to add yeah. I want to I want to expand a bit more about that. Yeah. You know like uh, fasting is not always going to be easy but it's going to be so worth it. Yeah. And like you know like for those who are addicted to social media like to be honest I love reels. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love it. I I know I, I sent me a, like 20 reels in a day. Yeah, I did have a bit of a problem, but guess what? I'm fasting that <laughs> and also I'm coupling it along with um fasting food. You know, like for me I'm skipping breakfast and like I tend to eat around like 1 or 2 p.m. or if I can extend it further and I'm coupling that along with Which is very difficult for him because he's a pilot, he needs to fly a plane. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, on like super duper long days then like I made try to replace the fast instead mm-hmm. you know but the whole idea is that when you fast don't just fast and don't do, don't do anything the whole point about fasting is that you need to couple it along with praying as yeah. well and you and know seeking god yeah so it's about replacing what let's say like you for your let's say you were to skip breakfast so instead of instead of not doing anything for breakfast and just sitting down and possibly thinking about food <laughs> why not use that time to pray instead yeah you know pray worship god speak in tongues if you can you know and really just dive in deeper with your relationship with god and you know like just day after day suddenly you you would feel something shift and yeah. i really believe that when uh, even as you fast and pray like even your spiritual authority increases mm-hmm. and Definitely. there's just so much more you know like yeah. you're so much more effective as a prayer warrior and and you just find that the the things in the things that's been bothering you may no longer bother you you may even uh, get breakthroughs you know and yeah. like it's all with the power of praying and fasting but yeah. also at the same time like for me at least uh, i used to do a lot of intermittent in, intermittent fasting and that mm-hmm. used to be like that, that was okay that for me i was uh, my body got accustomed to it and so on but for some reason whenever i do a spiritual fast like i i tell god like okay god i'm just going to fast like maybe for one or two days or even like typically i used to be able to like do intermittent fasting for like three days and mm-hmm. it's like no big deal but when i want to do the same thing for a spiritual fast oh my yeah it, it's, it's so, so much, much more 
harder and I don't even know why. It's mm -hmm. definitely a spiritual attack. I always believe that. Yeah, that because like what I could do, like, you know, like whenever I dedicate it, I can't even I can't even reach like half that amount. Yeah. So what I want to address as well is just the struggles that you may face and just know that yeah. it is so much more worth it and you're not alone. Don't give up. Try bit by bit. But the mm -hmm. important thing is just to invite the Holy Spirit into it, in with your journey of fasting and to yeah. put God first. You know, that's the whole idea about yeah. fasting, to deny your flesh, to deny your cravings and to really just focus in on God, feed your spirit man instead yeah. of your, your fleshly desires. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not easy when you try to get closer to God. Yeah. Um, doing things like fasting, it's definitely there's, not easy yeah, at all. There's gonna be resistance, yeah, there's right? going to be there's resistance, There's going to be distractions. But it's going to be so worth on. it, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, yesterday I tried to do a whole day dinner fast. I couldn't take it. I was too <laughs> hungry. I was waiting for him to finish his flight so we could go out to a mama store. <laughs> and eat roti and like if you guys don't know what that is like, midnight. It's like yeah it's like indian food close to midnight and i i couldn't take it i was so hungry and it's like on usual days i feel like if i if i eat vegetables the whole days i will still like be somewhat okay but like yeah. yeah it was it was just completely different and trust me like when we say spiritual authority increases that's like definitely you know like when you fast your spiritual authority increases because mm. even in the bible it says that when when the disciples tried to like cast the demon out and yeah. they couldn't do it and they were like, asking jesus like like how come we couldn't do it and and jesus was like yeah it's only through prayer and fasting mm -hmm. you can do this like mm -hmm. basically break the stronghold like through prayer and fasting yeah. and yeah jesus like fasted a lot and yeah, jesus prayed and fasted a lot and yeah and he went and, away you know like what everyone want to highlight is jesus himself withdrew from everyone and went into the secret place alone time with God. He used yeah. to hike up mountains just to be alone with God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to hike up mountains yeah. to be alone and, with God. You can shut yourself yeah. in the room and, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and there. honestly, like, you don't have to, like, do a fast where you're like, okay, I'm going to fast, like, all meals for, like, one week and only drink water this upcoming yeah. week and all that. No, you can be very, very practical about it. Start small, yeah, right? Start small, yeah. like, baby steps, you know, and... Like, if, if you're someone who, like, eats a lot, maybe, like, just go, like, okay, I'll just fast this one meal for a day. And, and during this time of fasting, I'm just gonna, like, maybe watch this sermon and I'm just gonna um, read this verse in the Bible and, and just journal. Like, start baby steps. You don't yeah. have to go all out, you know, at, at once. It's better mm -hmm. for you to be consistent, like, throughout the week with, yeah. a, I guess, not so big fast. Um, and, like, be consistent mm -hmm. rather than, like, you do such a huge fast where you're like skipping all your meals and drinking only water but you that only lasts like a day yeah. you know consistency is like so much more important yeah and also like you know like if you've been fasting for like a week or so and suddenly like one day you like aren't able to fast or like you know you give in to your temptation i would say that's okay it's fine mm -hmm. but go try to get back to it you know yeah, because pick yourself back up yeah, yeah so don't beat yourself up too much and say it's impossible you know yeah and ask God for the strength you know like you're not doing this on your own strength do it with like God's strength yeah. um and like yeah one more thing I wanted to add is get accountability yeah because, it's so much more easier to do it with someone else right? yeah definitely yeah. when you know that people are like fasting with you yeah like together it it helps so much rather than like you trying to like hold yourself accountable to yeah. it it's the same thing with like gym it's the same thing with like you know doing the things that are i guess difficult but good for you yeah like getting accountability definitely helps you go further yeah yeah so true so yeah that's all we wanted to share today in yeah. this video yeah Did actually i just want to add one last thing you know like for me i really believe like the saddest thing that anyone can experience is going through your entire life not knowing how much love that god actually has for you mm -hmm. you know and like our point here for this whole video today is all right this podcast today is just to share a little bit more about what easter is about what good friday is about and yeah. even with the the power of prayer and fasting but just know that god really just loves you so yeah. much you know and it's we we hope that everyone gets to experience that love you know yeah and if you've never experienced it before just open up your heart to god and just ask him to reveal himself to you and some some people may have have may have had a hard time growing up or may have had like various life experiences just know that 
any bad thing, you know, it didn't come from God and we live in a fallen world and mm-hmm. things do happen and sometimes we don't have the answers for all of that. Yeah. You know, but just know that God really loves you and yeah. He He really just wants and longs for that relationship with you. You know, He's a loving Father. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. Yeah. You know, so I hope this encourages you and this uh, gets gets you back in the right path at least to just one step closer to get on a relationship with God, you know? Yeah, and like, um, you know, if, if you're going through like a dry season in your life yeah. or you're battling an addiction or you're battling like just something very difficult in your life, I really highly, highly encourage you to try fasting. Yeah. Because I've heard so many testimonies mm-hmm. of people even be able to break out of addictions yeah. or break out of like, the wilderness in their lives and all that through like fasting. Mm-hmm. So like really highly encouraged. Like if you've tried everything, you've tried praying, you've tried doing this, doing that, and it didn't work, but you haven't tried fasting, mm-hmm. try fasting. Yeah. Like give it a try, why not? Yeah. I I mean you don't lose anything and I I can't, you know, tell you it's a guarantee like method that will 100% help you but you know maybe just give it a try yeah I mean yeah. You, you could lose something you could lose like calories yeah. <laughs> weight <laughs> yeah and yeah. like it's so much more achievable if you just skip breakfast just think of it as a you can eat, just eat lunch it's just like fasting for an additional 4 hours in the morning if you wake up at 8 and yeah I mean but it, but it really depends on you like if you're <laughs> someone who just doesn't eat breakfast anyways and you just yeah then eat you're lunch, already fasting then, no then, then it doesn't count as a fast <laughs> okay fine then it's like like that doesn't count as a fast for okay, you. Then if just it, if add on a few more hours. Then. Yeah, if it's something that you're already like doing every day, <laughs> anyways. But just switch things up. You know, it counts as a fast if it costs you. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how you can measure it. It counts as a fast if it costs you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's all we wanted to share today. And honey, why don't you close us with a word of prayer before we end? Okay, God, we just want to lift up everyone who is just watching this right now. Yeah. And uh, we pray, Lord God, that you send this out to all the right places, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for whoever who is listening. We mm-hmm. thank you, God, that... We thank you, Lord, that they will discover your love for them. Yeah. The love that you've always had for them. Even before they, even before they were formed, you had that love for them. Yeah. And we, we thank you, Father, that um, whoever is going through stuff, they're going through difficulties, or even if they have questions and are confused about yeah. the gospel or Good Friday or Easter or whatever it is, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that you will answer their questions at the right time. And we pray, mm. Lord God, that they will just experience your love on a whole other level. Mm. Just want to commit all these viewers, all, all the viewers into your hands. Thank you, Father, that you bless them mightily, God, that they will be movers and shakers in their own ways and in their field of work, oh Lord. Mm. Bless them, God. All this in Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much again for watching. It's been a pleasure being on this journey with all of you. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all the other platforms. Till next time. Bye.